Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a torque vectoring rear differential and how super handling all wheel drive works. The super handling all wheel drive is Acura and Honda's version of their front wheel drive based all wheel drive system. By the way, this rear differential is out of a 2020 Acura RDX. Now the difference between the open differential and this torque vectoring one is you'll see on the side here, you've got this chunk and this chunk which has a clutch pack inside of there which can actually lock each wheel to the input in order to provide more torque bias to one side for better handling. Now taking a quick look around this different differential you'll see that we've got these two mounts at the front here and two points that mount it to the back subframe here here is the input shaft which is the pinion the axles would go in here on the left side and on the right side at the top of the differential we have the vent tube now on the left side here we've got an oil control valve and a pressure switch and then on the right side here you also have what looks like a oil control valve and a pressure switch but on the side here's where some of the magic happens where it looks like we've got an electric motor or a pump so we're going to take this thing completely apart to see what's inside and how it works the first thing we're going to do is remove all of these connector bobs so we can get the wiring harness out of the way who would have thought that your rear differential would have a big harness like this next up i'll remove this little actuator this looks just like the oil control valve on your engine for variable valve timing just going to use this adjustable hammer here to knock this pressure sensor loose and then I'll knock this one loose as well looks just like the oil pressure switch on your car's engine as well I'm going to take off the sensor on the bottom here I wonder if that's a speed sensor or a fluid temperature sensor pop off these differential mounts next up I'm going to remove this motor here this is an electric motor with a little slot over here drives a slot inside of here I'm assuming that slot drives an oil pump which is what that oil control valve controls to lock up this clutch so let's find out oh, we got a little bit of fluid leakage here so I've got my brother's old underwear got holes in it let's wipe that up I'm sure he's not going to need this anymore okay now I'm going to see if we can pop this off and there's the clutch pack yeah and I have more mess on the ground here so I'm just gonna wipe up my cardboard studio all right so it looks like inside of here we have the oil pump and here we have the input and output which correlate to these two holes over here now the drain plug is actually situated over here that's why it's important to keep your fluid level above these holes over here the fill plug is actually located at the seam over here if you have low fluid the oil pumps gonna starve and you're gonna fry the all-wheel drive system and inside of this casing here there is a roller bearing upon which this shaft here rotates against now the shaft here is spline internally that goes to the axle that powers the rear right side wheel and you'll see that there's also a thrust bearing over here now this entire thing here is the clutch pack right, let me see if I could take this entire clutch assembly off here so here you can see the piece that's splined to go to the axle and it's marked 2019 because this was a 2020 model so this here is the output coming from the differential and this here is the input to the clutch pack all right I'm going to flip this around and we can do the same thing to the left side move all of the bolts Pop this out of here. Same thing like this side, we've got a little bearing on the inside here. And there's like a thrust washer here. And then here we've got the internal spline for the left side shaft. I'll just remove the clutch pack. And there's this thrust bearing here too. At least the oil quality looks pretty good, but it's not as thick as that gear oil that you usually put in a differential. It's kind of thinner. Right, I'm gonna see if I can get the pinion nut off here. All right, I couldn't really get that nut out and it's not really worth it anyway. So let's take the rest of this apart. Pop off this rear cover. Here you can see that's the fill port inside of there. All right, so it turns out this is not an open differential at all inside. In fact, it's literally just the pinion gear inside of there driving this giant ring gear and it's solidly connected to the two clutch packs on the outside for your output. So in fact, instead of using spider gears inside of here like an open differential, they're relying on the clutch plates on the side over here to give the differences in wheel speed when you go around corners. Now, obviously that's not the best for the longevity of the clutch packs because they're always gonna be slipping as you're taking turns, but this is a much more compact way of doing things see if we can pop this out of here let's pop this straight out and we've got the bearings of course these have a bit of a conical shape to them the reason these bearings have that conical shape is because due to the ring gears teeth here it's going to provide a little bit of axial forces so you want to be able to capture that in the design of the bearings now at the bottom here we've got this little baffle slash filter thing the temperature sensor used to hang out at the bottom here and this basically feeds this piece here which fed the oil pump that sat on the side let's pop up can pop this off here yeah it looks like that is a filter very similar to the transmission filter just a mini version of it finally inside of here we have the pinion gear which is the input from the transfer case now it's helical cut like this in a sort of spiral shape because it allows more surface area so you can transfer more torque but it also is much quieter than using a straight cut gear so you've got all the components removed from the rear differential of this super handling all-wheel drive vehicle we're going to take a closer look at how they work so as we saw the pinion gear is going to provide the input it's going to come to this ring gear over here now it is going to spin this solid axle which is 
going to join to the spline over here on either side which is going to spin the clutch pack. Now if you remember the clutch pack has an input over here from this spline which is effectively splined to the ring gear through this here and then it's got the output here which goes to the axle to power the wheel. Now because the centerpiece is splined to some of the clutches inside of here, half of the clutches are going to turn inside of here. However, the output here is splined to the other half and as long as this clutch is not applied or pressurized, this wheel can free spin relative to the input shaft. Now that's also the reason why you don't have a spider gear set up inside of here the way an open differential works. So this car can negotiate a turn because you've got that relative slip between the left side wheel and the right side wheel. Now let's say the vehicle is taking a right turn and you want to power the left side wheel to give the vehicle a little bit of yaw so we can rotate and handle a little bit better. Well the computer is going to apply a little bit of pressure through this oil control valve over here to this clutch pack and lock it up. That means 100% of the torque that's being sent here is going to be locked up and sent out to this left wheel over here because the input which is this ring gear is going to be locked to the output which is the axle and you can apply all of that power. However you actually have two inputs because you've got two clutches on either side and you've got two oil control valves. So through pulse width modulation you can actually vary the torque split between the left side and the right side which means that let's say you want to apply 60% of the power to this side and 40% of the power to this side just by controlling the oil pressure in each one of these clutches. Now that's good because now you can instantly power the torque going to each side of the wheel based on the vehicle's input, the wheel speed sensors and the yaw rate sensor to get way better handling. So here's a quick overview on how this works. We've got the engine that powers the transmission. That power is then going to be sent over to the transfer case where it's going to first power the front wheel. Now power from that drive shaft is going to be sent to this solid axle at the back here. At the back here we've got these clutch packs over here that then power each wheel. Now in order to control these clutch packs we have an oil pump which is going to provide fluid flow and then we've got the oil control valve as well as the pressure switch. These all provide a closed loop control system to the powertrain control module and that's going to vary how much pressure is being applied to each clutch. So let's say you wanted to make a left hand turn. Well you would want to apply more power to the outside rear wheel. Now to do that in all-wheel drive mode with a torque multiplier in some vehicles it's a 30% front and a 70% rear split and of that 70% we can have 25% on this side let's say and 45% on this side depending on how much you lock up these clutches. So if you apply a little bit more oil pressure to this one compared to this one it'll allow you to have that torque vectoring and therefore having more torque applied to the outside wheel will allow the vehicle to rotate about its center axis and give you that yaw so you can spin out and do a drift. All right taking a look at how this thing is controlled we've got the housing over here which is going to take oil pressure from the oil pump. That's going to send that oil down over this way through this cavity into the centerpiece over here. You can see there's these two holes over here. But those two holes are going to correlate to where this oil control valve is hanging out inside of here and through pulse width modulation we're going to control the amount of oil pressure that's going to be sent through this cavity over here which is going to fill up the little holes inside of this clutch pack. Alright, let's open up these clutches so we can see what's inside. Last thing over here. Well, that was surprisingly easy. It's just a piece of wire. Let's see if we can pop this apart here. So now with this all apart, it's easy to see this casing here has an internal spline that's splined to the differential and internally over here it's got these splines here which are going to spline to the clutch packs. Now as I take this apart here, this is the output. It's going to spline to the axle going to the wheel and on the outside over here we've got the spline that are going to go to the clutch pack. Now inside of this piece here you can see the little holes. This entire thing is going to fill with hydraulic pressure and that's going to come out the top here where it's going to spread the plates apart and pressurize the whole clutch. So here we have the clutch packs. Now just like in your transmission, we have these steel bands over here. Now these steel bands are externally splined and then we have these friction discs here. These friction discs are only internally splined over here like this. Now we have alternates between the two. We've got steels and then we have friction and then we have steels and friction and what this is going to do is the external teeth over here are going to lock to the input side while the friction discs over here are going to lock to the output side over here. Now what happens is as you're driving along these clutches are allowed to slip relative to each other. So basically inputs on the outside here can keep rolling with the differential part over here while the wheel is relatively stationary or slipping against it depending on the wheel speed difference as it's rolling along. However if you apply pressure and lock this up this entire thing becomes one piece and whatever is externally spline which is the input is now connected to the internal spline which is the 
output and now you're going to have power transfer between these two of course there's variations it's not always completely locked up you can have a little bit of slip between these clutch plates and that's going to allow torque split between these two if you apply them just a little bit you can also apply each of them on all the time which is going to give you a complete 50 50 torque split now if you did a 50 50 torque lock split that's good for off-road situations where you have a lot of gravel or loose surfaces and it basically functions like a locking differential like on a jeep or something you don't really need that with a torque vectoring differential because the computer is going to sense that say this wheel is spinning and it's going to stop applying torque here and apply all the torque on this side however it's worth noting this is more of a reactive setup so you kind of have to wait for the wheel to slip or the vehicle's angle to change in order to release that clutch pack and apply it to the other clutch pack whereas a torsion limited slip differential will automatically control the torque to either wheel that needs it let's look at the oil pump real quick here's the oil pump yeah, it's a cute little oil pump. All right, so the oil pump is more of a wheel kind of oil pump where you have a little small wheel on the inside, which is driven by the electric motor, and that's going to rotate inside of the housing here, creating fluid flow. Now, the input of that is this little slot here, which is controlled by this electric motor. Now, this here is the oil pump motor. I doubt I'll be able to get these Phillips screws off here without stripping it. All right, after a bit of beating, I was able to get the cover off, and that's because it's sealed all the way around. It's got a thick piece of clay or something inside of here probably thermal paste this needs to dissipate some heat against this case here you see you got the little fins going here I gotta use my underwear on my screwdriver handle because uh, my hands are too oily take these screws off these don't strip I need to eat lunch I'm not strong enough right now okay that one came out Inside here you can see you got a couple of capacitors, an inductor, and some control logic which I wasn't really expecting given that this is just an open loop control motor. Okay, I got the rotor out of there. Alright, so there, it looks like the rotor here has the permanent magnets on it. And inside of here we have the coils. Given that there's three wires, I'm assuming this is a three-phase motor. Now I can use this to pick up all the little screws and bits that I've dropped. Now having an electric motor on the rear differential is actually pretty common on front-wheel drive based all-wheel drive vehicles. And that's because what it does is it has a clutch set in front which decouples the pinion from an open differential at the back here. I think it's a pretty good setup to have this in the back so you get a little bit more driving dynamics because I know it is pretty expensive if Honda had to develop a longitudinally mounted rear wheel drive vehicle which they don't have at least this provides a pretty good solution for those looking for better dynamics and that's a look inside of Honda's super handling all-wheel drive system and how it works make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one